in the angelic ranking in all of creation only man could reveal the dimensions of god and lucifer had perceived this thing so he wanted to enter into it i will exalt my throne above this so when a, a believer begins to mature and if you find a believer who is genuine one thing you will find in his life is prayer this is why we no longer call it prayer point we call it prayer life because when you truly are a christian it will be difficult to do without prayer trust me find any man who doesn't have a prayer life to a very large extent his christianity is fake because anything can pull him down when a man is burning for god one of the signs you will see in him is the sign of prayer and when a man begins to fall in grace the first sign you will notice is that prayer will be withdrawn because one of the greatest indicators and parameters that shows that your life is being lived for god is that that life will be spent praying this is one way you'll find genuine christian if you meet anybody no matter what he's telling you if you can't see prayer please be careful because this thing is not just about a religious ritual is the wooing of the spirit when a man loves god when a man is genuine the holy ghost draws him he cannot stay without communing with the holy spirit so prayer for him is not what christians do prayer for him is like breathing because every day every hour the holy ghost will keep drawing him because anything you love and anything your heart is connected to we draw you and so when you find a christian who is given to prayer know that beyond what you are seeing there is a force on his inside that keeps pulling him to the altar the guy was talking in sons of solomon chapter 1 verse 1 and he said to kiss us go to verse 2 he said let him kiss us or kiss me this person now by the way there's actually no us in this equation <laughs> it's a deep-seated reality of the soul he said kiss me with the kisses of thine of his, of his mouth he said for thy love is better than wine so what is projecting the guy to pray is a, a deep-seated intercourse and intimacy it's the love that he has experienced from his king that draws him he didn't say because you promised something he didn't say because i want to make impression he said the reason i keep demanding and the word kiss there is not a sensual expression it's talking about passion inflame us with thy fires because your love is better than wine and he went further in verse 3 see what the guy said see when you see people who have been baptized with prayer they cannot but eulogize god because they are touching the fragrances of the most high. he said because of the savour of thy good ointment he said thy name is as ointment poured forth he said the name of god to him is like a man is standing and you open a drum of perfume and you are just pouring it so it's the way the fragrance oozes out of the perfume he said that's how when you say jesus to him jesus is not a religious name jesus is like many drums of perfume poured forth so when he hears jesus his soul lives for joy when he hears abba father his soul is excited when he hears anything about god stares him and so he cannot go a moment without prayer because as he's walking in the market he remembers god something the thing awakens him is like passion passion is deeper than the passion you have for a woman when he hears about power he hears about anointing he hears about miracles he hears about mercy he hears about jehovah something wakes up on his inside so he doesn't remember that he's in the market he doesn't remember that he's in the office as far as he's concerned anything about god is fragrance to him and you must respond if 10 people pass by you and they carry some strong colognes you know that you must talk the thing has a way of getting your attention so the way the spiritual man his attention is gotten is by releasing prayer so when god rises on his inside ka -ka 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 -ka, and the tongue is a function of the dimension of intimacy that is felt it's not something you repeat even if he's praying with his understanding the thing is a fountain abba father the one who dwells in light the one that created the cosmos the king over the heavens the one that rides upon the cloud oh thou majesty go and read the psalms and see what prayer is it's, it's a love story it's, it's intercourse it's intimacy that is beyond human comprehension so a man stands up and he said the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restored my soul though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the day 
days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever he, that, that is he's an intercourse he's lost imagine how many those of you who understand English language see figures of speech see idiomatic expression see the things the guy was pulling he called him Lord he called him shepherd he called him soul restorer he called him his protector he called him his anointer well, how are you getting those inspiration because thy name is like the ointment poured forth so you cannot but respond with eulogies you cannot but respond with a, 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 a response of prayer 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 oh my god no wonder the apostle said in acts chapter 6 verse 4 we cannot do any other thing prayer has damaged us when we encounter this god something came alive on our inside so even when we are in the market our thoughts are on him when we are on the job our thoughts are on him so they said the only thing we can do is to give ourselves to prayer to prayer and to the ministry of the world we are drunk with this god in fact a point came paul said to the church in thessalonica in first thessalonica chapter 5 verse 17 he said pray without ceasing this thing is not about prayer point this thing is not about prayer time it's a river that flows endlessly endlessly because sometimes you stop praying on your lips your heart takes over you thought you left the prayer altar mandara kabakata you have prayed for 10 hours as you now close your mouth your song now your heart now begins you are hearing it until it becomes too loud you have to add your voice again as you stop your heart takes over and then sometimes when you are done talking then the heart begins to chant you know the hebrew guys they don't read the psalms they chant it because they know they are utterances of intimacy they don't read it a man wakes up in the morning and as he rises from his bed the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i fear the lord is the light of my life of whom shall i be afraid and he just keeps talking and he just keeps talking he wakes up another day he said him that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high abides under the shadow of the almighty and he shall see of his god is my refuge and my fortress my god in whom will i trust a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right hand he shall not come near me with my eyes i shall see and behold the recompense of the wicked and what are you saying where are you talking from ah. so if a man has not touched him he's looking for what to say but when you touch him he himself becomes your inspiration he flows out of you he flows he flows see this is why you need grace to be a genuine christian this is not something you do mechanically or try to create impression ask those who pray they will tell you it's a life it's a world it's a realm it's a river as you are praying a point will come the prayer will overtake you and you are praying but you discover you are now writing on the prayer because when you pray for a while the prayer will start praying you oh i wish you know these things hey. you will enter different places you will pray to a realm you will laugh you pray to another realm you will cry you pray to another realm you are running you pray to another realm you are fighting when you finish you know you that started you nail down you face the wall somewhere oh, yeah. every genuine christian is a man of prayer go and write it down and if you are not praying your christianity is difficult trust me you have not just faced a circumstance that will reveal it but the day the circumstance that will reveal how fake you are comes you will fall i'm telling you these are insurance systems of a godly life the way the life of god works in you is to ventilate through prayer and you cannot but pray check the scripture from genesis to revelation everybody that stood for god was a man of prayer he said from the days of enosh men began to call upon the name of the lord genesis 4 26 and it continued like that noah found grace with god and you thought he was lucky and you now come to Genesis 8, 20 to 22. He said, Noah built an altar. Abraham, come out of that country. You think, ah, he was lucky. He was special. And then you go to Genesis 12, verse 6. Abraham entered Bethel. He raised an altar. Genesis 12, 7. He raised an altar. Genesis 13, 18. He came to Mamre. He raised an altar. You will now know that one constant that you will find in every genuine person across the generation was prayer. And when Jesus the Lord himself came, 
he prayed prayer he lived prayer and that was how he ended his work even on the cross my lord and my god he was connected my lord and my god at every face prayer the holy ghost came announced him this is my beloved son you think he will go and sew a new suit did you know were you not at the jordan i was the one they spoke about no he went to the wilderness 40 days prayer and fasting he returned to the synagogue you think ah here we go prayer 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 every face of the way he will leave a crusade you will think he's going to sleep prayer jesus will withdraw from a crusade and go straight to the room and pray till the next morning and then you are wondering what is in this thing that you are doing that's where the life of the believer is hid is on the altar god will hide it there many talkers but few people pray that's why there's nothing to show when i went to the redemption camp i said okay i have just two sessions if i finish i'll see god's servant and leave they told me he just landed from israel yesterday and they won't come out till the day he's preaching you know where he went to he went straight to the prayer room at the age of 82 and he prayed there until thursday we went on tuesday he came and went straight to the prayer room even his wife knows that she has to wait and he was there till thursday when he was supposed to preach he came out and took a shower and went to the altar and you think why do you think they're invisible when you cook yourself from the altar when you are coming every demon knows they know who carry fire they know if there's one thing demons know is the one who carries fire and when you show up you don't need drama when you talk your word becomes like a road prayer is one of the greatest responsibility of a genuine christian and i will show you why prayer is so important several reasons number one when you pray you exercise your spirit so that all your potentials can find expression every believer is decked with enormous potentials i have taught you here before all of us seated here we have the holy spirit and so by extension the nine gifts of the spirit can manifest through us because when we talk about the gift of the spirit it's not that the holy ghost is giving faith giving this no he's manifesting different the gift of the spirit is actually called the charisma of the holy ghost so the way you find a footballer one is doing hard man another one is all those things are charisma so word of knowledge is a charisma of the spirit word of wisdom is a charisma healing is a charisma so the holy ghost flows through you depending on which one you give allowance to the gift is not healing it's not word of knowledge the holy ghost is the gift but the nine are trapped in the holy ghost and they actually more than nine so everybody sitting here has the capacity to manifest all the gifts of the spirit number two you have an anointing on your life that should make you do mighty works in acts 10 38 it says how god anointed jesus with the holy ghost and power in acts 1 8 he said you too not many days from now you shall be anointed with the holy ghost and power so it's the same anointing on jesus that's on your life and then the faith of jesus is the same faith you have second peter chapter 1 verse 1 he spoke to us he said we have like precious faith and in galatians 2 20 paul said i have the faith of the son of god so the faith you have now is the faith of jesus in romans chapter 12 verse 3 he said god dealt to every one of us the measure of faith we require for a glorious destiny and god didn't stop there you have the life of jesus the very life that powered jesus that's the life you have he said this is the record first john 5 11 whoever had the son has life and he said these things have i written unto you verse 13 that you might know that you have eternal life so you have the life of jesus you have the faith of jesus you have the anointing of jesus you have the spirit of jesus you are too loaded with potentials the challenge is that you are not exercised so the potentials can't find expression it's like a young man who goes to a gym he may go there lanky give him eight months all he needs to do is to carry iron as he's carrying iron he's putting pressure on the muscle he's putting pressure on the muscle after a while the muscles will become stiff a friend of mine who is a footballer he came to my house and he told me ah why are you light like this i said what do you mean he touched me say abba abba this one is bread now is this a man's skin <laughs> i said what do you mean he said touch me when i touched him his body was like block i now touched myself truly my body was like foam ah he said touch my stomach as i touched the stomach was like concrete i said what is this he said wait let me show you he now sat in a posture hung his leg and his hand he said do it i did it for five seconds i felt <laughs> he said you put pressure put pressure so when they carry iron when they are running on the treadmill they are putting pressure on the lungs and they are putting pressure on the muscles it's called cardiovascular fitness and cardiomuscular fitness one toughens your muscles another one toughens your lungs your blood vessels so that you become like a rod 
and if you do it for eight months for one year for two years when you come out they will no longer recognize you the people that were trying to bully you before all you need to do is to remove your shirt and just find yourself when they see what's happening they will know that you went somewhere you are a changed man meanwhile all of that potential was there but it, it will take raising some metals to put pressure there so the bible said in first timothy 4 8 it said bodily exercise profited little it said but godliness profited more for it profits in this life and in the life that is to come and one of the dimensions of godliness that builds you up in jude verse 20 it said building up yourself upon your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost when a christian begins to pray it's like he has entered the gym that your your spiritual senses that are dull keep gym in there after three months the sense will begin the antenna will come out the antenna will come out after six months you will start picking frequencies you who is asking how does god speak to men nobody will tell you they don't introduce men to it a day will come like somewhere you will lie on the altar when the evil lamp is put out and you will hear a voice call your name even if you don't know it's god you will hear it you can't deny it because something has happened to you your spiritual potentials and propensities have been awoken building up yourselves upon your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost that's when you will know that there's favor on your life that's when you will know that you too can see visions that's when you will know can i okay let me show you two dimensions of strength that this exercise will give you number one is discernment in jeremiah 33 verse 3 it says call upon me and we answer but i don't only answer when i am done answering you then i will take you to where things are shown to men they say i will show you great and mighty things that you know not of so when a man start praying after a while the strength that comes to his spirit is called discernment he will start seeing things in the spirit that's when your life will no longer be by luck and chance when you want to go right you will know mm -mm, that's the wrong direction so you will lift your leg you will bring it back turn here and move precision will come to your life people will say how did you know i don't know how i know but my spirit knows because as you pray he doesn't only answer he shows you great and mighty things that you know not of so prayer builds discernment the second thing prayer does is that prayer charges your spirit prayer energizes your spirit there's such a thing called the stirring of the holy ghost sometimes i'm invited to preach and i know that i'm tired i know that i need high wisdom to operate there i read the bible i flip from this book flip to that book flip to the other book nothing is coming i just lock myself and i charge my spirit one hour two hours three hours four hours i stand up i'm going to the meeting i've not heard anything but i have charged there is voltage here now sometimes when you climb the altar the moment you carry the microphone you will now hear we see not our signs ah a whisper will come from yonder and as you glide on that even the utterance will come to you you who didn't know what to say suddenly you become like a lion your wings come to you and you soar beyond the most knowledgeable person there and they will ask you how did you know these things i don't know it i'm only scared that's the strength that's daring is what will carry you for many days you didn't see elijah rise up and eat the journey is great sometimes as you are going you will meet backbiters they will shoot arrows into your heart sometimes as you are going you will see discouragers they will say things that will weaken you sometimes as you are going you will see men that shut doors that's why you need sufficient energy and the place to build that energy is on the altar and this energy is not atp it's the stirring of the spirit it's like what the military guy calls morale when he wants to go to war he knows he has been trained in the nda he knows he has fought some battles before but every war has its peculiarity and so before you go to war thank god for your training but you will need morale so that you are not discouraged so that you are not broken and sometimes when they are already arrayed in the battlefield then they will bring a, an orator the job of the orator is to stare them stare them when the orator finish talking you will see this army that is obviously outnumbered they will leave their sword and say to the death they are no longer thinking they are charged but when you are charged even your enemy will know that it's finished because what wins a battle is not the soldiers that are more numerous it's the ones that are more morale it's the ones that are more charged when you carry sufficient charge no power on earth can bring you down this is what intoxicates us and when we collide with problems what others see as their end we see as a platform for ascension prayer is what empowers a christian it's a bodily exercise profits little imagine all the benefits of bodily exercise compared to what you will get when you charge in the spirit they say it's little do you know the benefits of physical exercise when you do exercise your blood streams open so that blood can flow well so you will hardly have issues with blood pressure you will hardly have issues with hypertension when you do enough exercise and blood flows to your brain it opens your brain up to think well 
some hormones are activated when you are doing exercise you find out that you are more excited and as you are more excited you are easily inspired all of those things are part of bodily exercise as if that is not enough when you do exercise as blood flows normal it breaks every tendency of 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 tumors so you hardly have issues like cancer and every kind of tumor it clears your body as you are doing exercise your muscles are developed you are more physically fit all the problem of back pain neck pain you will not feel it even when you are 80 years old you will be strong at 80 but he said all these things put together is little and you are here you are crying i'm defeated no you are not defeated you are not exercising go to the gym of the spirit carry 10 hours of prayer for two months carry five hours for six months carry 17 hours for 10 months and see what happens to you the things you call a challenge you will wake up they will disappear on their own i'm telling you most of the battles i fought i didn't have to fight when i cook myself if i come out that's when i knew that demons have intelligence they know who to fight because they don't have enough resources to waste when they know that you have time they flee and as you show up the moment they appear the anger holy anger with which you will respond they will know that kai we came up did you not see what happened to jesus after he fasted and prayed for three days the devil came to bring him down when he tried he tried they, they thought and jesus said away from me there was fire in the spirit the man fled if you don't take off you're in trouble meanwhile you for you for 10 years one demon is hanging doing nonsense you are not charged you are not charged go and charge go and charge 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 you will see what your life will become the phone you are having it can untouch it can do internet service it can make us but when the battery is dead everything goes off the moment the phone becomes charged the wireless can function the touch can function the call can function so all of the potential of the phone was tied to its charging this is why most of us sitting here should be changing our world but we are still slaves because we don't know the place of the altar listen when you leave this meeting tonight tell yourself i've had enough people lay hands on me i've had enough anointing oil in my life let me go to the altar where men are cooked even jesus himself had to find the altar and if you go there trust me you will not regret another version of you will appear when your world see you they will say kai this man has seen something destroy men when they confront you from nowhere the holy ghost will rise on your inside you will feel him when he stands up you will become like a lion what intimidates others that's when you charge a wisdom will come to you an understanding will come to you see when you are functioning you will you will enjoy it you will enjoy it oh, yeah. spend time to pray there are too many dormant potentials that's why he said awake awake thou that sleepest they say and christ will give you light awake from their slumber too many are slumbering away their destinies so you see generous you see leaders you see men that should change their generation helplessly begging because they are not a reason in christ you see arise shine my light is gone prayer is a way of genie your spirit what's the second benefit of prayer prayer helps you to access the proceeding world in matthew chapter 4 verse 4 he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Meanwhile, the proceeding word is what makes you invincible. Don't make the mistake of thinking, if you have Genesis to Revelation in your head, you'll be wise. Go and meet some theologians. You will see how terribly confused they are. Jesus met the Pharisees. He said, you cite the scripture. Because you think in them, you'll find eternal life. He said, but they speak of me. So you can read the whole scripture and not find Jesus until the proceeding world comes to you that's what we make that verse make sense that's what we make that chapter make sense so when you are done praying reading studying meditating you must add prayer when you now add prayer what prayer does is that it gives you access to where the scriptures came from that's why second peter 1 20 it said no it is first no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation it's a holy man of god they spake as they were carried by the spirit of god these men were moved they were moved they came to a point where they journeyed to where life dwells 
so they understood the scripture because they accessed it in the spirit it was john that was speaking in revelation chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 he said i john i'm your brother in tribulation and he said i was on the eye called patmos and i was in the spirit on the lost day and he said suddenly i heard a sound as of a trumpet the guy had read bible but now he needed to interact with the living world i was in the spirit on the lost day and i heard a sound as of a trumpet he said as i turned he now went to where the scriptures came from i saw seven golden lampstand and he said in between them i saw one walking even the jesus he read the scripture he now met him in glory he didn't know him anymore because now what is reading is not logos he has been brought to interact with the living world and jesus had to introduce himself again i am alpha omega i am the one who was who is and who is to come i'm the one who was dead but now i live forevermore and jesus began to explain to him this is the mystery of the seven stars this is the mystery of the seven candles is when the proceeding world begins to come that's when you become wise that's when you become powerful this is why it's not enough to load yourself with logos choke prayer with the world he said the fire on the altar must not be put out the priest must put wood on it every morning make sure help the sister there make sure that the world is lighted with fire that fire comes from the altar when you study when you meditate add some tongues add some tongues so that the one who is the word will speak to your ears that's what will bring distinction to your destiny go and ask every champion they will tell you god told me everybody has a proceeding word that's what defines your destiny if you have not caught it your destiny will be without direction and you will be confused even with the many verses of scripture that you have in your head so the second thing prayer does is that he grants you access to the proceeding world i can tell you every level of my life what god told me i didn't come here by mistake i came here by hearing please hear me thank god for impartation but you must go to the realm for yourself if your life will count you must travel there are places where men hear the whispers of god at that level god talks to everyone and so the second thing prayer does is that he grants you access to the proceeding world please sit down the third thing prayer does for you is that prayer engenders transformation and transfiguration how can you imagine that the pharisees knowing every literally every verse of the of the world yet they were full of flesh and mischievity because they didn't interact with the one they were studying about when you begin to pray transformation and transfiguration begins to take place and jesus revealed some of these things to us so that we can pattern our lives and for those of you who pray learn these things so that you know what to focus on when you are praying when you are praying your goal is to build capacity not to create impression a thousand people a million people will clap hands for you it doesn't mean you amount to anything don't waste your existence prayer is to engender capacity prayer is to bring you to the proceeding world when you are praying this is what you are looking for we have distracted people who even though they want to pray they do it carnally because they don't know what to look for in prayer it's not a ground for gymnastics it's a place to encounter god and number three when you pray transformation transfiguration takes place in matthew 17 verse 2 the bible said after eight days jesus took peter james and john to the mountain and he said dear as he prayed after six days he said as he prayed he said the fashion of his countenance was altered he said his raiment began to glister and even the cloth jesus wore began to shine so jesus knew the organic technology of transformation that when a man begins to pray things begin to happen and it was in the latter verse of that scripture that we now saw why transfiguration was taking place because when you start praying you begin to behold and any realm and any being you behold you are transformed into that realm or that being because the bible said they appeared before him moses and elijah so he had to take his glory form in order to commune at that level he said it does not yet appear what we shall be like he said but when we shall see him we shall be like him this is why second corinthians 3 18 said we all with open faces why is our face open because we have turned from the law we have accepted the gospel he said we now behold beholding is the art of prayer where you steal your spirit so that you can see what god is saying so that you can see where god is going the gospel has removed the veil but prayer will help you to behold it's like the mystery of a converging lens those of you who are physics students when you carry the lens and you are adjusting it it hits a focal point where the
a ray of the sun is converged to a light that is as sharp as a needle, that light can set anything on fire. So your eyes have been unveiled by the gospel. But if you don't pray, you will not behold. Because beholding is a prayer technology that zooms your frequency until you become one with God's frequency. And he said, when you hit that frequency, something happens. He said, you are transfigured. You are metamorphosed into the glory that you see. So when you see a godless generation in a, to a very large extent, it's because prayer has been removed. There are few who are beholding. We look Facebook and we enter pornography enter all kinds of godless practices and we are wondering why are we struggling with masturbation that's what you are beholding why am i struggling with immorality that's what you are beholding it's the law of kiko what you goggle in is what you goggle out you are not different from what you see and hear and so what you need to do is to censor your atmosphere through prayer and when you censor it and the realm covers you you cannot but live like that realm it's not everybody that is struggling everybody who is struggling is struggling because he's seeing and hearing the wrong thing but for those who have made up their mind to live beholding, every day, new level of glory comes out of them. Because if you pray, you will see. I quoted for you already, Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He said, ask of me, I will answer. And I will show you. You can't pray and not see. This is why some of us, our prayer don't end with time. It ends with visions. When I go to pray, I must see something. Sometimes I'm praying for three hours. My mind is wandering around. I know prayer has not started. I will be there until my heart becomes silent. And the moment you hit the frequency of silence, God begins to speak. Visions begins to open. And when you come out, you will be what you saw. You will be what you hear. This is how Christianity is practiced. And this is why prayer is a responsibility of every spiritual man. Everyone who prays is not only transformed, he is also transfigured. Number four, why is prayer important? And why must we pray? Legislation and litigation is not possible except by prayer. What is litigation? is the act of probing is the act of judging and is the act of in enforcing the laws of god the will of god the mind of god that's litigation what is legislation is the act of enacting laws is the act of writing laws policies in the spirit everybody who prays can bring the law of god over a system he can bring the law of god over a territory you can see somebody who is dying of sickness you know that what god said is health the only way you can move him from sickness to health is when you know the way of prayer because that's how you enforce the will of god it's called legislation and litigation so number one you can judge that sickness you can judge the demon responsible and when you are done dealing with the demon then you now insist on the will of god this is why we pray if you don't pray the will of god will not happen when jesus was praying in matthew chapter 6 our father which art in heaven give us this day our daily bread our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. So it is prayer that establishes the will of God which is in heaven on earth. So if you are not seeing the will of God in your life and in your family, one of the major reasons why it is so is because you have not begun to enforce it in prayer. I'm telling you, you look at some people, you say they are lucky. Who is lucky? Nobody is lucky. You think the devil knows anything like luck? Who is talking luck? The devil wants every one of us dead. He said the devil cometh not but for to kill to steal and to destroy that's the plan of the devil he said the devil is prowling like a roaring lion seeking whom he will devour the reason some of us are standing is because he tried he couldn't we know the way of prayer when we see something that is not consistent with the will of god we know what to do about it sometimes you lock your door for three days you are insisting that this poverty must break you are insisting that this sickness must end you are insisting that this embargo on this family must stop it's when you win on the altar that you win in the natural so for us prayer is not drama prayer is not caricature prayer is a way of changing things and i can tell you how many things have changed in my family all my elder sisters were in their 30s 32 34 beautiful elegant women nobody was looking at them what's the meaning of this i now knew that oh a prince have put a cobweb up there see if you don't know that prayer is litigation that's when you can be acting drama for some of us when we are praying we are fighting so we are sensitive of our weapons because we need to bring something down a mountain must go down and i went war there went war there and wisdom kept coming until one day finally god spoke and when i administered it i now gave them a law because after you litigate to legislate when you judge the spirit you now write your own law i told them before this year is over all of you are married and today they are all married with children imagine if we were waiting that if god wants it will happen we would have still been waiting and hoping but there are those who say enough is enough there are those who say no to the devil but the way to say no is not by bluffing it's by praying 
I was languishing in obscurity in Makodi. Imagine. For one whole year, all my salary is 300,000. How do you survive? After one month of hard work, they will pay me 25,000. In fact, I moved from one school to the other. My salary changed from 22,000 to 25,000. Meanwhile, I am first son. Because my other brother is late. My father is retired. So I will see, do you know how many people are dependent on me? If I tell you how many people are paying their school fees in the university, you will be shocked. If I tell you how many people have to give monthly allowance, you will be shocked. How can 25,000 do that? A day came, I sat on my, on my table, HOD chemistry. Can you imagine? HOD chemistry, earning 25,000. And sometimes, you will add physics and mathematics because the school does not have teacher. And sometimes in one month, I aggregate the total hour I speak is 18 hours. From 40, 40 minutes, I'm teaching four classes, five classes every day. Hours aggregating, hours. And when I finish, salary 25,000. I will now end up paying Okada 12,000. And go back home with 13,000. I remove tight 25. What I'm left with is about 9,000 plus. I say, no, you don't change your word like this. I now withdraw into my closet. And then that year, every month, I go on 21 days fast. I rest for nine days. I go another 21 days. I rest for nine days. I go another 21 days. I come to the office. I write my name. When I'm done teaching, I lock myself in the office. Manta kakarosta. Barakados tevira kaka. Rakaban. Those were the years when I leveled every book of Kenneth Hege. Leveled every book of E.W.K. Leveled everything of Andrew Womack. Leveled everything of Bishop Oedebo. For 24 hours, the only time you see me away from God's presence is when I'm teaching. I come back home. I lock the door. Manta kipa karata. Barakata. Everybody that was relevant had laid hands on me. I hear there's conference in Lagos, I go there. I hear there's conference in Wari, I go there. Name them. All the big names laid hands on me, but the seed remained. It will never germinate. What is going on here? The devil had built a hedge. I now knew that all man for himself. Everybody must wake up in the day of his battle. Because the Bible says if you faint in the day of battle, it's not because God does not exist. It's because your strength is little. And I said, thank God for the impartation from Pastor Chris. Thank God for the impartation from Bishop David Odeko. Thank God for the impartation from Sadhu Savarat. Thank God for the impartation from all of the big names of the body. I must find my altar. And every month, 21 days fast, when I met Todd White, I hugged him. He prayed for me. I thought my word would blow. I met, what's his name? Randy Clark. That was the apostle that mobilized Hedy Baker to change our world. He laid hands on me. He said, walk in the glory realm. Impartations were resting. Mantles were hanging. Seeds were deposited. Until God showed me one scripture. Paul told Timothy. He said, this charge I give thee, O Timothy, that you fan to flame the gift of God that were in you by the laying on of hands of the presbytery. I said, my God, so I'm the one been, I'm the one who has been delaying God. I added fasting. I added worship. I added prayer. Sometimes I wake up around 12. I pray till 5 o'clock. The whole neighborhood is shaking. And when I pray, sometimes I am charged. I say, the devil, where are you? Show your face. Why are you hiding? I'm ready. See, the thing we, uh, sometimes we became mad. I was test running everything. I will see water outside. Rain falls. I don't have time to go and buy water. There's no time. So rain will fall. Water that is outside for many days. I was so intoxicated. I will fetch it and say, bless, drink. Nothing can. The guy had become a war of fire. A war of fire. And by the time we entered September, the heavens began to move. That was when I knew what the Bible said. It said, when the cloud be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. I sat there when the angels began to blow the shofar. Blow the shofar. Blow the shofar. I will go for one meeting. I will preach and come back. I didn't even have a page. I didn't have anywhere I was putting message. Somebody will carry it and will not be able to sleep. They will cut it, put online. The angels will blow on it. I will sit. Somebody will look for my number. I say, is this Apostle Mike? I say, I'm not yet. I'm Pastor Mike. They say, don't worry about title. I heard your message and this happened. Please, sir, can you please be kind enough to give me your account number? I said, well, I don't need to be kind. Take it. <laughs> what do you mean by kind? Take it. I will sit in that same office. Office that I was earning 300,000 in one year. I will receive one and last 3 million. And I shook my head and said, where have I been? Melaika, Ebeluka, Makaya. 
Ramadhani ya munde regai Nesi yatu mbarando kuwaka Ayunele ya manakuwate Shetan ni go So we say no Challenge is not too big. Your altar has not is not yet strong to swallow it. Leave the challenge, face the altar. The day the altar becomes big, the altar will swallow the challenge. And this thing is not about money. That's just one aspect of my life that God can take a man from obscurity. That God can open the gate and break embargoes over family. Even my ordination. Who cares what you are preaching? I will preach. I don't preach mysteries anymore. I will preach all the revelation in this world. Nobody cares, but when that day came, I will cough. God raised some army. This Jesus Kam that is here, something also. Jesus Kam was the first person. He is a physiotherapist. His job is to help people who are struggling with uh, muscular conditions. And he was working in the hospital, but he lost his sleep. He will meet me and say, "Please, sir, anywhere you preach, give me the messages." He will collect it. He will now cut it into ten minutes. And there was this animation he knew how to do. So as I'm talking. If I call three, three will appear. If I call fire, fire will appear. So he will do the animation. So he will put it off. As I'm talking, the animation, boom, it will explode. Otso who came and said, Kai, these things are scattered everywhere. Let's put Telegram. Let's put Facebook. I said, okay, go ahead. Me, I'm here. I'm still, I'm still on the altar. I'm still on the altar. When I finish preaching, they will go and look for the name of the people that invited me. Download it and they'll be walking. And the angels were blowing shofars. They were blowing shofars. After a while, suddenly, 2017, Somebody rose from the ashes. Higher. Parakate. Somebody is calling from London. Somebody is calling from South Africa. Somebody is calling from USA. I, I asked myself, do they know where I live? Do they know my age? Do they know me? All those things don't matter anymore. All they heard was a voice crying in the wilderness. Prepare a way for the Lord. So they were interacting with the weight of the voice. With the dimension that the voice carried. That's when I knew that anybody can be anything. All you need is to invest time on the altar. When you pray. The princes can be judged. Laws can be written. And your destiny can come alive. Don't allow yourself. Live at the mercy of any body. Or any spirit. Christ has given us the victory. You must insist on it. On the altar. The fourth purpose of prayer. Is for legislation. And litigation. Sit down. Ah. that we record but i can assure you most times not up to 30 percent receive miracles you hear that two three people sold lands it will encourage your faith but ask yourself how many people have lands that they have not sold you hear that 10 people 20 people 30 people are healed ask yourself how many sick people came there you hear that god opens door for 10 people for 15 people ask yourself how many people are in obscurity this is why in addition to the prophecy in addition to the laying on of hands Go and find your altar. Go and find your altar. So that you don't fall into the probability of those who are blessed from those who are not blessed. The only way to insist that it must be you is that you dig your knee into the altar. And you stay there. Because if you are there, God will appear. He will never deny himself. Most of you, you come to men of God. My family, nobody's married. Nobody's prospering. We will pray. And God answers many. But there are many more that are not answered. This is why... You must find your order. Stay there until light comes. Prayer is for legislation and is for litigation. Number five, prayer is for intimacy and for deep intercourse with the Spirit of God. Because there are secrets in God that are not for the public. I've taught you before about the tabernacles of old. There is the outer court where the whole congregation gather. There is the inner court where only the priest can go to. The outer court is illuminated by the sun. That's why you can come to church. You have people with different philosophies and different ideologies. They are illuminated by the sun. Society can still inspire them. But when you go to the inner court, the rays of the sun are not permitted. It's only the menorah that lightens men there. The light of the government of God. And there is yet another place deeper than the inner court. It's called the Holy of Holies. Only the high priest goes there. And the man who reaches the Holy of Holies knows the Shekinah by experience. 
for him it's not something he reads in the book it's a being that he encounters and everyone who wants to grow in god and become the joy of many generations must build intimacy through prayer i quoted for you already from psalm 91 see what the bible says i will show you how god becomes a personal god not a congregational god he said he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty he said he because this is a journey for every individual it's not we it's not them he that dwelleth in the secret place and then see verse 2 he didn't say they shall say he said i will say of the lord the lord is the lord of everybody but everybody may not have the authority to say it i will say of the lord he is my he didn't say he's our refuge that's why 10,000 people can be in the church one person has never seen an affliction but you see 100 others because it's not we will say of our refuge i will say he is my refuge and then he went further and my fortress this is the one that blew my mind my god in him will i trust when you begin to journey with god he's no longer the god of abraham he's no longer the god of isaac he's no longer the god of jacob he's no longer the god of apostle michael Robo. he becomes my god so you are no longer trusting in the god of abraham you are no longer just trusting in the god of isaac you can now say my god in him will i trust and because he has become your god you can define the different dimensions of his faithfulness you can know that this business cannot collapse not just because i quoted the verse of scripture because i have seen my god show so much faithfulness so i know this business cannot go down this is the journey of intimacy this one is not for a congregation it's for every individual if you will get to that point where it can become my god then you must be ready to travel in the place of prayer did you see what happened in acts of the apostles chapter 3 when peter and john came to the temple the bible said the important man sat at the gate and when he saw them he begged them to give him arms and peter made a statement he said look on us there is a place where is us but there is a place where it must become i and you know what he said silver and gold have i not he didn't say have we not silver and gold have i not he said but such as i have there is something god has given me silver and gold have i not he didn't say have we not john knows what he has but me there is something i have and he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk and he lifted the man up strength entered him because there was something he had there was something did you not read in acts chapter 5 verse 15 all of them came out from prayer but the bible said the shadow of peter he didn't say the shadow of the apostles there were at least 12 apostles and he didn't say only peter came out he said when the time of prayer was over everybody came out from prayer he said but they laid the sick and the impotent on the street not that the shadow of Bartholomew, not that the shadow of timothy not that the shadow of, of uh, but what's their name now matthew james john no he said the shadow of peter and he said everyone that the shadow of peter fell on was made whole were there not 12 apostles but there is a thing called such as i have there is a general thing god gave all of us but there is a such as i have if your life will count you too must have such as i have it was later that we now saw that john too had such as i have because while peter was working miracles john was excavating mysteries he said i was in the spirit of the lost day and i saw so john was a seer peter was a worker of miracle meanwhile paul was a custodian of revelation all of them apostles but everyone had something the deception of our generation is for you to think that because you are in a church of power your life will go forward it's for you to think because you are in a prophetic church you will have direction listen the apostle the prophet the pastor can do so much but in the face of the challenges prevailing challenges so much is so little what happened Fifty thousand people gather and you'll see 200 people come out and they are shouting god touch me thank god that's a mighty move of god but what is 200 among fifty thousand? do you know that probability it is highly inconsequential this is why why we thank god for what he has done you must insist i must journey with god it was that journey that the psalmist then backed upon and he said the lord is my shepherd i don't know about israel all of us are the ecclesia but for me the lord is my shepherd for me i shall not want israel may want but me i shall not want why he leaded me in the path of righteousness i walk with him i have a journey with him i know him by experience too many christians gather in the church and because we have also weaponized the doctrine of covering we have made many christian babies 
So people won't pray. People won't fast. People won't see God. When you ask them, they are arguing. I have a cover over my head. I have a cover. You are infants. You are not ready to grow. You, when, you, when you meet the severity of life, you will shut up. And if you are honest to yourself, you will know that thank God for those covers. But many of your life's battle, you will fight it for yourself. There are places where if you don't know God, you are doomed. Have you not seen people who died under the most potent covers? Have you not seen people who are sick under the most potent covers? Are we honest to ourselves? Which of the so-called covering in the body of Christ today, have you not seen somebody under them have accident and died? Have you not seen somebody have sickness and die? Does this in any way mean that covering is not important? No. Paul said, when I leave you, he said, grievous work shall come. So there is a place of spiritual covering. But I'm telling you, God did not excuse intimacy for covering. You must know God for yourself. Otherwise, you are a joker. And the day battles come, that's when you will discover that only those who have testimonies talk on the altar. The ones who don't have testimonies, they condole with them and say, it is well, God will help you. If you don't want to be part of those who will be condoled with, better go and seek God for yourself. There is a journey that everyone must embark with God. He said, Enoch walked with God and was not. Enoch walked. Your name must be written that you too walked with God. This nonsense of pursuing mantles and having no walk with God. Be careful. Again, there is a place for mantles. There is a place for impartation. That's why it began by teaching you. Even Paul taught it in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 3 and 4 the place of the laying on of hands but if you don't have a walk with god and you keep deceiving yourself pursuing mantles people will travel go and stay somewhere for three months to see a prophet to see an apostle but they're at home one year they have not gone to stay, stay with god and there's a delusion about mantle about impartation and many will not see god if you leave your christianity in that shallow realm you will suffer you will suffer go and ask everybody making impact although they respect the place of covering but every level in their journey, they will tell you, God told me, God told me, God told me, God told me. Once in a while, a covering can be a system of intervention. But the journey is about God told me. The journey is about God met me. The journey is about I walked with God. That's what will take you to your inheritance. This is why prayer becomes personal. Nobody can pray for another person. Once in a while, God can use a man or a system to intervene. But the journey of life, is one that you must make for yourself. Jesus was speaking in Luke 22 verse 41. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you to sift you as wheat. He said, but I pray for you that your faith fail not. He said, when thou art recovered, strengthen thy brethren. That's the place of covering. That's the place of intervention. Paul said, when I leave you, grievous wolves shall come to make disciples after themselves. But you see, a day came when Peter had to pray for himself. A day came when Peter had to learn to walk with God. Because the journey of life is intimacy based. It's not covering based. Covering is only an interventive system of advantage. But if it stops you from having a walk with God, you were deceived. Prayer. System of intimacy. That's where you access the secrets of God. Sir, can I tell you something? You are very poor if you have no secret with God. No matter the name you have, no matter what you have in your account, your wealth is the secret that you have with God. Abraham never judged his wealth by cattle. Isaac never judge his wealth by cattle. Jacob never judge his wealth by cattle. All of those things were byproducts. You know what these men did? When they want to die, they transfer their heritage with God to their children. The Bible said Abraham gave gifts to the sons of Keturah, but he said to Isaac, he gave the promise. He had something with God. When Isaac was about to die, he said, get for me a savory venison. I will eat and my soul will bless you. And he laid hands on his son and transferred an inheritance. And Jacob, when he was about to die, he said, gather around me, you sons of Jacob. I will tell you the things that will befall you. It was there he made Judah a king. He said, the scepter will not depart from Judah until she comes. What do you have? You are, you are bragging on money that governments of nations put value on. You are bragging on titles that systems put value on. I am manager. I am chairman. What happens if that bank goes down tomorrow? If that company goes down tomorrow, who are you? Everyone must walk with God until he becomes a custodian. And when you walk, walk with the consciousness that you have something in God. That's the sign that you have paid the price of prayer. Because God can commit something to you as a custodian. Finally, prayer gives you room to participate in the world that is to come. He said when Jesus was praying, 
he said there appeared to him moses and elijah and he was legislating over matters of the ages that is to come matters of the world that is to come when john was carried to heaven he was interacting with matters of the ages to come prayer will make you it will immortalize you because some of the things you catch on the altar and some of the transactions you carry even when you are long gone those transactions will remain did you not read about abel the bible said even while he was dead he said his blood was crying from the ground the guy had become an immortal through altar interactions transactions on the altars of god if all your life is about is time based it means your life is short even if you live for a hundred years your life is short when men begin to pray and transact on the altar they end up with legacies and transactions that are immortal in nature that even when they are long gone those things will remain as a memorial in the house of god so the way to elongate your existence is not just by supplements and exercise it's by having investment on the altar because some of us even when we leave this world heaven will recognize us and even in the world to come you will have a part to play why would moses and elijah come and they'll be talking to jesus about what he will do in a generation that was many hundreds of years after they were gone because men of the altar don't die they remain relevant with god for eternity i don't know what your pursuits are but if you want to be relevant eternally prayer must go to the foundation of your existence prayer is a way of spiritual exercise that builds discernment and strength prayer is a way of accessing the proceeding word of god prayer is a way of engendering transformation and transfiguration prayer is a tool of legislation and litigation prayer is a way of building intimacy with god and prayer is a system of securing immortality as far as divine administration is concerned where are you standing how tall is your altar and what is the weight of your consecration that's what determines the very essence of your existence you know the unfortunate thing about many christians they never pray bow your heads let's pray time is a body i wanted to talk about soul winning as the second spiritual responsibility of a genuine christian there's no genuine christian who doesn't pant after soul winning because that's one thing that is at the center of the heart of god if you have met god and if you love god you will know that for every soul that perishes brings god great anguish this is why soul winning will become your way of life and then the third responsibility of every genuine christian is the art of giving because kingdom can never move forward except as men give but i don't have time tonight let's stop with prayer and ask the lord for the grace can you bow your heads one minute and ask the lord give me the grace for prayer and not just prayer that engenders distraction but prayer that is purposeful as far as divine administration is concerned give me that grace sometimes we say these things very hard and raw because of the degree to which they've been abused and bastardized every day you see millions of christians going nowhere or suffering diverse affliction because they were mentored wrongly because they were taught wrongly and some will only get to realize it in eternity so when we address these things aggressively it's not an attempt to appear sarcastic no i love the body of christ i honor the authorities in the body of christ but listen now there are people under me and i will not allow any one of them fail or be taught wrongly we say this thing so that you will know the urgency and even personally listen i've been in the pit before and many times i've been there i've seen people die in my family like chickens because i was taught the wrong things and the day of adversity came all those things i were taught i discovered many of them were nonsense and many are still going through those things because they were not taught the right things this is why we teach these things the way we teach there are many young people with great potentials who are atheists today because they taught them nonsense they came to church instead of learning christ they were teaching them church dogmas and roped them into all forms of witchcraft and when they tried for years and it didn't work they said christianity is a scam and so many great prophets great apostles are out there smoking marijuana and are kidnappers and bandits 
because when the God opened their heart they were not taught truth ask God for grace tonight before I speak over you ask God for grace tonight if there's one thing that should come upon you the grace for prayer and not just praying but praying correctly lift your hands toward heaven if you are kneeling down praying you don't need to stand if you are standing you can remain standing there are two things tonight number one i will pray for god to release a grace on your life so that your own altar will come alive i know you have depended on the altar the corporate altar of the ministry for long but it's time for your own altar to come alive can i assure you the altar the corporate altar will help you but it can only take you far if you want to see your destiny realize your own altar must come alive trust me many junctions of life you will meet this hard truth and when that day comes may god help you that your altar is already talking i want to pray now for god to release grace the grace for prayer that spiritual lethargy that every time you want to pray you will not be able to help those under the anointing that lethargy will be lifted tonight he said the fire on the altar must not be put out the priest must put fire wood on it every morning right now in the name of jesus let that altar that has gone obsolete let it catch fire now if you can't just be quiet god will visit us mightily this week but i will tell you how he will do it you will write one thing one and take that thing to this altar that god is setting on fire today pray about it for just one hour on saturday if you have not had the testimony come here and tell me i'm fake this gospel of making you depend on one man until that man becomes another god in your life is african witchcraft I'm not saying men don't have a place but when we make men our God is wrong I have suffered that deception I know what I'm telling you lift your hands toward heaven father you say we should ask we'll receive we should seek we'll find we should knock the door will be open right now you said you are going to release a fire to activate altars and so Holy Spirit on ground and online everyone whose heart is open now i declare under this atmosphere and by the authority of the holy ghost let that fire rest upon them now father from the left to the right from the front to the back to those watching online i declare take that fire now Usher, accept them there are 14 of you that god is kindling a new fire Help them, help them, help them. The weight is coming stronger. Allow him, allow him. Refuse to be distracted at this time. Refuse to be distracted. Allow the Holy Ghost breathe upon you. Ushers, you can help them, you can help them. Some of you is a weight of glory. Some of you is a fire. Some of you, the realms of the Spirit are opening to you. As I'm talking now, you are receiving instructions on what to do. Some of you, God is telling you pray at night. Some of you is telling you pray in the morning. Some of you is telling you pray in the afternoon. That's the gate of the Spirit opening to you. By the Spirit, step in now. In the angelic ranking, in all of creation, only man could reveal the dimensions of God. And Lucifer had perceived this thing, so he wanted to enter into it. I will exalt my throne above this.